as long as I can remember it, my parents would make me wear a life jacket to go down fishing until I could swim back and forth across the lake. That was a big test. So until then, I'd strap a life jacket on every day, go dig up some worms and go see what I could catch. My name is Barrett Ames. I'm one of the partners, uh, owners of the Opportunity, the yellow boat behind me, and uh, Trayfin Dayboat Seafoods. Uh, my partner is Mike Domeyer. In the summer here in Iwaka, we uh, commercial fish for albacore tuna. So me and my now wife moved out here about seven years ago now. First job I found was just in a fish market with some friends that I met right off the bat. Mike, when he bought the boat, came into that fish market to talk to the owner about selling fish, and I kind of overheard the conversation and just went sprinting out. And like, I'll go. I know how to fish. Albacore tuna are such a commodity traded thing now. It's worldwide, it's a massive industry. But a lot of that fish doesn't just stay here locally. People don't even know it's around here half the time. A lot of the commercial boats for tuna would be out for five, six days, up to a month or two. You know, some of the biggest boats will blast freeze them on board. And it's still a good product, it's just different, right? We're really trying to build a direct to consumer, like kind of a membership program. We have members that get fish every month of the year. What's really nice about that is when they get it, like it hasn't gone anywhere, you know? It came off a boat right here, came to the back of that building, and then we drove it and handed it right to you. So it really keeps the carbon footprint down. It wasn't shipped all over the place, cut, and then shipped back. Then you know exactly who did it. A lot of that fish, I caught it, I cut it, froze it, and then I'm gonna hand it to you. The idea that Trey Finn goes out hook and line catching these fish, come back to their place in Iwako, process, and then deliver themselves. I mean, in the fishing world, that's about as clean as you can get as a commercial operation for getting fish from sea to plate. My name is Dave McCoy and I own a fly shop, Emerald Water Anglers, here in Seattle, Washington. I grew up in Oregon, and my dad's been chasing tuna for as long as I can remember. So when I moved back to Seattle, I was looking for captains in the various ports around here to go chase tuna on the fly with. People look at tuna and they just want to go out and kill them for meat. But man, they're great sport fish. The way we fish, where we're chumming, getting them super close to the boat, you know, you're watching them bite half the time, you're seeing them flash and boil. So when you get them fired up, they're super aggressive. I mean, I've caught a lot of fish, you know, blackfin, yellowfin, and false albacore on the East Coast. And they're all strong, but I think albacore, that first burst of speed, I think, beats them all, really. Most people consider this salmon and steelhead country. And to chase tuna on the fly is is still, to this day, off a lot of people's radar. The reason fly fishing is so fun to do this with is because you're on a moving boat, so it's, you know, you're having to balance. It's a little chaotic. I think in general, the, you know, as fly anglers, we enjoy that, that chaos. Pretty cool spot on the planet, really. We're right where the Columbia hits the Pacific. This town's Iwako. The other side, on the Oregon side, you know, we're just about 20 minutes from Astoria. Commercial fishing's huge here at the mouth of the Columbia, between here and Astoria and Warrington. You know, there's sh shrimping going on, black cod, link cod, halibut, all have commercial fisheries out here. Half the time you're walking on the jetty, you'll see whales or porpoises right in the river. I mean, just about at your feet. And it's pretty cool just pointing that boat west every day and you're just heading out in the middle of nothing, right? Once you get that salt in you, it's hard to get it out. 